Hello, this is EDSAC. EDSAC was one of the first operational stored program computers. It was built at the University of Cambridge Mathematical Laboratory in England and was operational from 1949 to 1958. EDSAC used vacuum tubes for the logic elements and mercury delay lines for storage. It needed 11 kilowatts of electricity to run and as you can see from this picture it filled a room. Of course, with the technology that we have now, we could do the same work on a device that fits in your pocket, and that's what I built here. This is an EDSAC simulator which I call EDSAC in your pocket, and in this video I'll tell you a little bit more about it and give you a quick demo. Now this is something I've built myself. You could say it's a demonstration of how much computing hardware has been miniaturised in the last 70 years, but really it's just a bit of fun. On the front we have a screen to show what the simulation is doing, there are three buttons on the top to control it, left, right and select, USB on one side and a power switch on the other. Finally on the back there is a speaker. The case is 3D printed and comes in four parts. The main body of the case, the back and two internal supports. Let's take a look inside. The core of this device is the Teensy 3.2 development board that the simulation runs on, which is this part here. This has an ARM Cortex M4 microcontroller with 64K of RAM and 256K for program storage, which is plenty for my needs. It takes power either over USB or from the onboard battery via this charger slash regulator board here. The only other major component is the screen, which is hidden behind everything else from this view. The screen is one of these 2.2 inch SPI LCD screens. It's not a touch screen, which is why we need the buttons on top to control the simulation. Now I'll put this back together and we can go through what's on that screen. One of the design goals of the original EDSAC was that it should be as simple as possible. The reason for this was that the designer, Maurice Wilkes, wanted to get the machine running quickly so that the university had a computer that they could actually run programs on. To that end, EDSAC only had a small number of registers. On my simulator, these are shown in binary at the top of the screen here. These are the accumulator, which has 71 bits, the multiplier register which has 35 bits and the sequence controller which has 10 bits. The sequence controller is what we would now call the program counter and gives the location in memory of the next instruction to execute. On the original EDSAC these registers could be displayed on a CRT on the operator's console as a series of dots. Also in this part of the screen there is a display of the current order being executed, an indicator to show where the simulation is running if it has encountered an error, and which set of initial orders are in use. Orders in EDSAC terminology are what we would now call instructions, and the initial orders are the program that the machine runs when it is first started, which we would now call the boot code. The EDSAC used mercury delay lines for main memory arranged in a series of 32 tanks, each of which contains 16 35-bit words. Another CRT on the operator's console could show the contents of one of these tanks as a grid of dots, and this is represented on my simulator here. To the right of that we have the controls for the simulator. As I mentioned earlier, this is not a touchscreen, so the three buttons on the top are used for control, with the left and right buttons moving the highlight to the previous or next control, and the middle button selecting it. Unlike some other early computers, the original EDSAC did not have a front panel that could be used to patch programs. If your program did not work correctly, you had to work out what was wrong with it and fix it offline to free the machine up for the next person. My simulation follows suit, with the main controls being run, stop, single step and reset, plus the ability to choose which tank number to display. The final part of the screen is the bottom half, which represents EDSAC's printed output. I don't know if green and white stripy printer paper was available in 1949, but that's what I've gone for in my simulation. One last thing to mention before moving on to the demo is sound. EDSAC had two ways to produce sound. The first was a bell which would ring when the machine reached a stop order to let the operator know that it had finished. My simulator beeps instead. It also prints ding but that's not an original feature. The second type of sound was produced by a speaker that was connected to the sign bit of the accumulator. A positive number in the accumulator would drive the speaker diaphragm one way a negative number would drive it in the opposite direction. In this way, the speaker would produce clicks and tones whilst the program ran. 
operators came to recognise which sounds could indicate a problem, such as a program that was stuck in an infinite loop. Having explained all that, let's have a demo. EDSAC ran its first program on the 7th of May 1949. This is a copy of the output of that program. The program printed the squares of the numbers 0 to 99. Unfortunately, that program has been lost to history. But what we do have is a program that was written by Morris Wilkes one month later, which prints the squares and differences for the numbers 1 to 100, and that is the program that I'm going to demo. Before I start the program, I'm going to change the displayed tank from 0 to 1, as that is where the program will load into memory. What you can see now in tank 0 are the initial orders, so I'll just do that with the buttons on the top of the device, there, now when I press start, the program will load into memory and start running. So you see that the memory fills with data and some of those memory contents keep changing as they hold the program variables. You can also see the register contents changing at the top and the program output starting to appear at the bottom of the screen. The noise that you can hear is the speaker controlled by the accumulator sign bit that I mentioned earlier. Every time that sign bit changes, you get a click. I should mention that the simulator can actually run a lot faster than this, but for this demo, I am running it at simulated EDSAC speed, otherwise the program will be finished in a few seconds. The program is now running through the numbers 1 to 100, outputting the square and difference for each one. When it has finished, it will stop and sound the bell, or beeper in this case. So I'll stop talking and let it finish. So there you go, a program from 1949 running almost 70 years later on hardware that is a fraction of the size of the machine it was originally written for. If you would like some more information, there are some links in the description, but other than that, thank you for watching.